first thing that I wanted to talk to you about is kind of context. In British Columbia, we have about 120,000 people already working in the tech sector, and those are wages that are about 60% higher than the industrial average. But we can't just assume that that's going to stay as is and we're going to continue to be successful in what we all know are very risky times around the world if you're watching what's happening in China, in Europe, and uh, certainly what's going on in, in the uh, political discussions in the United States. But at the moment, we have the strongest economy in the country. We created 50,000 jobs here last year. We remain AAA rated. We are the only province in Canada where that's true. And it's a really good starting point. But we have to think about over this, this tech summit, how we're gonna keep that going. And when, we talk, when I talk to you, I hear you need four things. One, you need ideas. And there, frankly, there's no shortage of ideas in British Columbia. We have some of the world's great universities, and they are producing incredible creative students who are producing um, those kinds of ideas that are going to be world leading. But the things that we don't have enough of, you've said, are money, access to investment and venture capital, talent, we need to deepen the local talent pool, and make and new markets, access to more customers for emerging products. So first on the capital side, you know we announced a $100 million tech venture capital fund for the first time uh, in, in many years in British Columbia. We are going to be able to refill that venture capital pool to make it available for young beginning companies that are need to find their way, that need to raise a little money. you'll get more details about exactly how it's going to work. We're still in the process of uh, seeking and negotiating with our, our successful private sector fund manager. We do know that government doesn't do the best job when we're choosing uh, winners and, and losers out there, when we're making investments uh, in the private sector. So we want to make sure this is done by a private sector fund manager. And you add that $100 million tech fund to the lowest combined uh, corporate taxes in the G7, and just as an example, in British Columbia, our combined corporate tax rate is 26%. In California, it's north of 40%. We have income tax credits up to $33 million every year for venture capital firms. Uh, we have tax credits for digital animation and visual effects, interactive digital media, and we have the lowest personal income taxes in most brackets of anywhere in the country. The second thing you've told us is you need more talent. And we know that that's crucial for your success. Tech companies will locate in places where they can find the people that will be capable of doing the work. So we need to start that in our schools. So over the next three years, every kindergarten to grade 12 student will have every one of them, will have kindergarten to grade 12 will have the opportunity to learn the basics of coding and all of those fundamental tech skills. Now, that's going to start in September, and it is my goal to make sure that it doesn't just become an opportunity for every child to take part in, that we ultimately make it mandatory for every child from kindergarten to grade 12 to learn what coding is and how it works. In post-secondary, we've got to continue to focus on that. We're moving $450 million for, uh, uh, for in-demand for training, specifically into tech, for in-demand jobs. We're updating our post-secondary curriculum with a new emphasis on technology, math, sciences, and creativity. We'll have new standards, we will have redesigned programs, and we um, already, our universities, have about 80% co-op programs in their, in their tech-related um, curriculum. In order to have any new program in tech approved in British Columbia, 100% of your students must be uh, able to go into a co-op program, and our goal is to make that true for all of the existing programs that are out there today. We're investing four and a half million dollars toward a technology stream for tuition training upgrading for people who are already in the workforce but want to move in to tech. Those, the applications for that program are open right now. But I know you want to make sure that British Columbians are first in line for jobs. That's what I want to do too. It's way easier to make sure that you're deploying local talent than it is finding talent somewhere else. But I also know 
that for many highly specialized jobs in tech, you need to look outside of British Columbia, outside of Canada, in order to find those workers. And I also know that when you do, for every one of them, something like five jobs get created, at least here in BC. So we're working with this new federal government to maximize our, our, the number of people that we are able to bring in from other countries through immigration to support the tech sector. Now you know our provincial nominee program, if you don't, you will, and um, I hope you won't find it as frustrating as those who do. It's our only direct tool that we have um, to be able to select immigrants specifically for specific jobs. Our quota that's given to us by the federal government is about 5,500 a year. We actually uh, uh, exceeded that last year and brought in 5,800. And it's our goal to make sure that we focus as many of those on the tech sector as we possibly can. Um, we've introduced a new online application system to try and make it a little bit easier for you because when you're working every day to try and build your business and your head down, you are not thinking about how you can wade your way through endless forms and requirements so that the federal government will allow you to be able to grow your business. So next week you will also see the launch of a new PNP skills immigration registration process that will be on our Welcome BC website. That's going to cut wait times even further and it's going to assure that you, our nominations, the ones that we send to the federal government for sign off, are the ones that meet your needs as precisely as we possibly can. Because I know that your demand for talent is urgent especially some of that highly specialized talent that you can't find here. So if you need help bringing immigrants into the country for specific jobs to support you in growing your business, I want you to call us. We have specific staff dedicated to helping you work through step by step the government process, which frankly you never ever want to become an expert in if you can help it. We have some who can do that for you and I want to put the number up here on the screen. Now last is markets. Obviously uh, capital and talent won't mean very much if you don't have anywhere to sell your product. And it occurs to me that in core government we spend about 45 billion dollars a year in British Columbia. And if you add in all of the other areas of government, um, it's a very big number. We procure a lot of product. And we have over the years, because government tends to be risk averse, gotten into the habit of procuring product from people with whom we already do business. And that means it makes it really difficult for emerging companies with new and innovative products to find their way in, to be able to do business with their own government. We intend to change that. So we've already made selling to government is much more simple. We used to have something like a 20 or 30 page RFP form. We've, we've reduced that down to two. And we are also creating now a developers exchange. This is going to make it radically faster to be able to respond to an RPA, a, a, a request for proposals. So that'll help us determine with you collaboratively what government needs to do to solve our problems.